uh, we shall start uh, good evening to my indian friend and good afternoon to the friends abroad uh, this is my third session of gabara focusing on dental education and uh, this is a session which we talk about uh, the aging out as you all uh, most of the members who are attending are senior citizens aging individuals and i would like to welcome all of them on board and it is a big opportunity given to me by dobara for which i am thankful to dobara being a non profit organization who is giving us the support and our and an opportunity as a dentist to give my input and help you all to understand the importance of mouth as age increases and what best can you do to maintain a good mouth a good hygiene and a healthy body this is dr ashank mishra from dental dentist hyderabad now aging is as an accumulation of changes which happens over time and aging in human is a multi dimensional process as i said it is a multi dimensional process and like any tissue of the human body even dental tissues we are talking about dental enamel dentin gums everything also undergoes changes from time to time or eventually as aging happens even dental tissues also get aging and they are changes what are seen during the aging process see of a most important added concern here is why are we so much interested in to aging and dental diseases why because as age progresses there is something which is added up to it which is the presence of systemic disease that means other medical conditions add up to your existing conditions patients may end up into sensitivity patients may patients may end up into root canal pain am i not clear uh your I audio is going in and out it's a little patchy okay not very clear right okay let me just see no. one now is it okay can you say a bit more okay now 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 is my audio okay it's it's literally going like you're going far and near it's like going in and out now how is it now is yeah. it okay yeah perfectly fine yeah okay 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 yeah so as i was saying that the most important uh, consideration when we are dealing with aging individual is medication most of us as the age increases most of us are taking up medication some are take medication for hypertension for diabetes for osteoporosis for spondylitis for rheumatoid issues for cardiac issues so many things right so as there are so many so many medications which we all are taking we have to also consider the importance of medications and their interactions before we plan out any type of dental treatment most of your side effects what you are seeing in your mouth are a complication or a side effect of the medication they are medication side effects which causes dryness of mouth which is very very important there are a lot of side effects of medication which causes suppression of the immunity so you start getting fungal infections in your mouth so there are so many side effects and most important the people who are on uh, a group of drugs called as bisphosphonates maybe people who are uh, suffering from osteoporosis or rheumatoid arthritis and those people doctors advise them a uh, group of drugs called as bisphosphonates and you all know that bisphosphonates when they taken on a longer span of time and they give them in uh, injection form they are chances of the patients landing up into necrosis or means means a problem of the jaw when we plan any surgical intervention so there are a lot of medications there are a lot of medical conditions which has to be considered when we are planning the treatment for elderly individuals okay 
Now, this is the speciality of dentistry, which is called as geriatric dentistry. And geriatric dentistry is a branch of dentistry that emphasizes dental care for elderly population and focuses upon patients with chronic physiological, psychological, and morbid conditions. As I said, geriatric dentistry is a specialized dentistry dealing with individuals who are having dental care in a, in a particular point of time, a particular age group, considering the systemic health, that means their overall health, and also considering their medical conditions, their medications, their drug history, and the previous dental history. Considering all these aspects, I would like to cater the elderly individual to this presentation so that whatever myths or whatever oral hygiene tips I can give, I would like to give across this presentation. So these changes which are seen in the oral cavity or in the oral tissues could be in teeth, could be in gums, could be in your saliva, could be in your taste. Deglutition is following and TMJ is your joint, as I mentioned. The TMJ means the joint where your lower jaw is attached to your head, right? That is called as a temporomandibular joint. So these are the changes which are seen according to the age and we will look into one by one individually and address to them. The first thing is the change what you see, which is based upon the appearance. So as the age progresses, something what you notice is the sunken teeth. You see that the teeth get sunk inside, you get sagging, you get the nape, you this is what you can see in the picture is the nasal labial folds, what you see, and this is what happens with aging. Now, this happens eventually with aging, but then mind you. If in a younger age also, if you don't go for a replacement of teeth, you look more older because you don't replace your tooth. Because what happens is the fullness of your lips and the fullness of your cheek, the, the fullness falls down and, you, and your appearance becomes more saggy. So this is what happens in a cosmetic purpose way when there will be these type of changes that happen on the aging. Next is the job bridges. With the age, eventually, the now see, you can see the condition where the individual has lost all the teeth. So what is there in the jaw is what happens is the same when the newborn is born. What happens is the gum pad. Only gums are there. So if you don't get the replacement of the teeth, what happens eventually is the ridges on which we are going to place the denture, those ridges become narrow. You can see in the picture that the ridge what you have becomes very, very narrow, thin down so that there is no place for the denture to be kept and then the frequent problem of lack of retention comes. So that is why whenever you lose your teeth, you have to make sure that you get them replaced before your bone inside, your gums become dissolved, thinned up, so that there is no opportunity for us to place a good denture, a simple conventional denture without doing any advanced technology. There are options to place or give you fixed teeth in this condition also, but that becomes surgical because we have to advise you implant. So, ridging the, the ridges what are there, they get resolved, and then we need to plan the treatment so that the, so that the dentures are given, the ridges are good enough, and they have a good support. I hope you understand that the basement, if the base is not strong and the width is not there, it will be difficult for you, us to give you a denture which is going to fit on that. Okay, so that is why the job is this, most common problem happens when you don't get the replacement of your teeth or don't get your dentures replaced as soon as you lose your teeth. One more thing what you will face is xerostomia, which is uh, commonly called as a dry mouth. As aging, what happens is your glands, your glands which makes your saliva, which is called as salivary glands, which are present. These glands, what happens is they get atrophied. And what happens is the amount of salivary secretion decreases and you start feeling dry mouth. You start feeling that you are getting dry mouth, you are getting soapy saliva, your lips are getting, uh, when the, the moment you are uh, maybe talking or something like that, you feel that they become dry, they get stick to each other and you feel that there is something wrong in your mouth, which is called a dry mouth. And then you can also see on the tongue surface that your tongue gets a lot of fissures. So there will be deepening of the fissures, what you will see. So what is the complication of getting a dry mouth? So when there is a dry mouth, what happens is that there is no saliva. So when there is no saliva, what happens? You get multiple decay. You get multiple, you get gum disease. Next thing is attrition. That means your enamel wears off. You can see a clinical picture. You can see the clinical picture. 
where the enamel wears off the 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 tooth which appears long enough will you will start feeling that your teeth are looking short they look tiny because the enamel is worn out you can see in the picture and you can see a post operative picture where we give you crown to give you a proper occlusion you can have a proper set of teeth so this is what happens with aging and as the age progresses the enamel gets worn off and your teeth become looks shorter and this is what is called as the attrition of teeth your teeth appears like this so what happens you start getting sensitivity so here you complain of sensitivity you say the moment i have cold i get bad sensitivity the moment i have something hot i get sensitivity some people are sensitive to cold some people are sensitive to tea some people are sensitive to sweet it depends upon person to person perception the sensitivity varies and then it becomes sometimes it becomes anxiety anxious for you you get a lot of you get a lot of anxiety sometimes it becomes a social embarrassment when you are not able to have an ice cream or dessert even though you enjoy the full sumptuous meal but then you come to have a dessert you feel a lot of sensitivity and you avoid having it why do you have to avoid because you have a mindset that no because i am eating this is normal yes it is normal but there are treatments for it we can definitely help you to avoid sensitivity we could help you to resolve sensitivity so we are always there to guide you and help you so i am always there so you have to consider that everything is physiological but they are modes of prevention and they are modes of treatment for that that is what is this is what is happening abrasion or abrasion when you do a very hard brush you take a hard brush or a medium brush brush it very hard so if you feel that if i am brushing for 10 minutes no need to go to a dentist because i am brushing so hard and removing such a nice plaque that is very important it no the more hard you brush the more complicated it becomes because you start losing your tooth structure the enamel is lost so that is what is the most important am i not my audio is not clear yeah dr shank it keeps going in and out like you're moving away from wherever the source of the audio is do you have a, a mic that is moving maybe or Okay, one second, one second, one. Second. I'll look at it. I'll look at it. Thank you. Now, am I audible, clear? Yeah. Can you say something more? I uh, just to. Uh, yeah. Am I audible now? Am I uh, clear? It's, yeah, it's clear for me now. Okay. So this is what happens in abrasion, where there will be a lot of uh, loss of the enamel, and then what happens basically is you lose the enamel and you start getting such notches on your teeth. If you can see the clinical picture there. If I'm not audible, please let me know. No, we are hearing. Uh, we we can hear you now. You can hear it now. That's great. Okay. So now what so happens? Something. No, something just changed again. This is this is this is what happens actually when you have lot of carbonated drinks, lot of citrus food. So what happens is you feel that enamel wears off and you start getting sensitivity, which is sometimes seen and sometimes it is not seen. What happens in the inside surface of your teeth? So this is what is erosions. this is what is what i am telling you dental caries which is which is the decay of the teeth which happens because of lack of saliva because your mouth is dry or you even feel that your saliva is very thick because what happens there is no moisturization in your mouth that is why we advise you to keep having lot of water don't be dehydrated that is the most important thing to be considered that dehydration is a big problem and in some ways we have to make sure that it is like that so maybe it is already in that way and now we have to make sure that there are multiple decays which happens you see longitudinal cracks which you see on the teeth as aging processes you see yellowishness this is also one of the very important thing which people uh, have a myth about that why am my teeth becoming yellow see it is physiological now what happens is your enamel is white so as the age progresses you lose the enamel so the inner surface of the tooth which is dentine starts appearing So you slightly start getting yellowish tinge on your teeth, and which is natural. 
and there is no need to do any treatment for that yellowishness because that is absolute physiological process of aging on the tooth surface. On the tongue surface, as I said, you have a lot of papillas because you have a lot of taste sensations and as age increases, as I said, the fissures will increase on the tongue. Dynas of mouth increases. Taste buds, you lose some taste buds and what happens is there's a lot of this is what you see, which is called as the caviar tongue. When we, you see a lot of blood vessel uh, proliferation in your, when you raise your tongue, you can see, which is, which is normal again. This is also physiological, which happens with aging. This is not a pathology, so don't worry about it. So this is what are the changes, what you observe on the tongue surface. Saliva, as I said, salivary flow decreases. There will be a lot of decrease of saliva. And what happens when saliva decreases, which is basically because of some of the drugs, you get lubrication problem, moisturization is not there, caries happen, you may notice that you are getting bad breath, you are getting a lot of decay, a lot of gum disease, and you know gum disease means it starts with bleeding gums, so this is all because of saliva. For this also we have a treatment. For this also we have a lot of treatment, first we take your drug history, we try to know whether any drug is causing you a problem with saliva, we give you artificial saliva, there is something called as salivary substitutes, something for lubricating your mouth, if you're not aware of. So there's, the, so there's a lot of things which I could advise you in these things. That if someone is facing these problems, some, uh, there, there are a lot of people who also face, uh, uh, I should say, uh, burning mouth. Like you feel a lot of burning in your mouth, which happens basically in females after menopause. And even uh, and in males, with a lot of stress and anxiety. You feel burning in the mouth. You feel that you can't eat any spicy food. So even that is also one of the complications which happens because of lack of saliva. For that also we have treatments, we have some recommended mouthwashes which I could help you with. So anyone suffering with those things also, definitely you can approach me for that. Now what are the changes in the motor function? There will be difficulty because all your tissues, all your muscles start getting atrophied, start getting weaker. So what happens is there will be difficulty in chewing because the muscles are weak. There will be difficulty in swallowing speech. So these things will happen. Most importantly, as I said, there are eight changes in the jaw bones. So what happens is your jaw bones, you see changes, you see change in your palate. Palate is the bone, what is there, uh, what is the above, what we call the roof of your mouth. So there'll be changes in the dimensions of that. And there'll be, that is something which happens a lot in the palate. And what happens is the palate changes because there are a lot of taste buds on your palate also. There are glands on the palate also. So even those, those things show changes your mandible and your maxilla. Your maxilla means your upper jaw bone and your mandible means your lower jaw bone. So what you can notice is there are a lot of changes in the jaw bones. There are changes in the joint. Like you all know very well that what happens is the most common thing is arthritis. What is arthritis? Arthritis is inflammation of your joints, which happens in your, it starts with your knee joint. It goes to your elbow joint, small joints. So they are, so how can you forget that there's a joint in your head also, which is called the temporomandibular joint, the joint which is present here. So even that joint starts getting changes, starts getting degenerative changes. You get arthritis of the joint where you have difficulty in opening. You say, I'm getting pain when I'm opening the mouth and I may get pain on right or left or both. So there are a lot of changes in the joint also which happens. So we need to rule out the arthritis of the joints because of which the joint, the muscles become problems. So it's difficult in opening the mouth, difficult in chewing, difficulty in swallowing. So these things are also affected with that. So what is, as I said before in my presentation, that we preferably focus on preventive dental care. So what is the problem in the preventive dental care? Most of, most of you all have a wrong opinion that the tooth loss is aging process and we cannot prevent it. As I said before, Tooth loss is aging process, but it cannot be prevented is not true. Okay, it is an aging process, but then it can be prevented, it can be treated. So whenever and don't get adapted to the compromised status of the mouth. So that, that there's a tooth loss, you lost the tooth, you say, but it's aging. Okay, fine, I'm 55, I lost the tooth. Why? Why do you think that? Because 55 is also young, 65 is also young. There is no end to aging. So if whatever age or whatever life we all have, we should make sure that we eat properly, we chew properly, and we should go for a rehabilitation of the teeth. Loss of teeth is preventable. We can manage. Replacement of the teeth is also there and it is mandatory. As I said, when there is no replacement of the tooth, there are a lot of changes which happens in your mouth, which are going to affect you in the later part of your life. 
lastly the, the concept of preventive dentistry was not there when most of you all were young so now what happens is the preventive dentistry has become a very young concept even be advised for even 3 years child also so preventive dentistry is an aspect which we advise to all the walks of life and we make sure that preventive dentistry has to be considered so that we can help every one of you so please remove that from your uh, your opinion about uh, that aging is there and things are there there is aging is there but you can never say that because you are aging you don't need teeth you need teeth you have a right to have teeth you have a right to have chewing efficiency swallowing food properly enjoying the food having a good taste and you need to understand everything about it and we are always there to help you and guide you at considering your medical status mind you considering your medical status so please look into it and try to understand these tips which i am being giving you to all of you you start using electric brushes or electric flossers if you are not able to do manually because there is a manual dexterity or you are not able to handle it i am there to guide you we'll be able to manage and help you to advise you which one to take how to use it instructions to use it where to use it water pick as i mentioned in previous sessions also remineralizing toothpaste because your teeth you have lost enamel so you need to maintain the tooth so we try to remineralize by giving you fluoride toothpaste fluoride mouth rinses proper denture care how to remove the denture how to place a denture how to clean the denture how to maintain your denture and something called as tsd tell show and do what i tell you i will show you then you will do it this is the concept where it is just not going on telling we will practically whatever i am telling you i will show it to you i will demonstrate to you either on some other individuals so that you learn from that or maybe to you itself so that you will understand tell show do technique which we do it even for children so that they understand how to use because you have been i'm sure all of them are using brushing all of them are using flossing but then as the age increases it is becoming cumbersome for you because of health reasons so we are there to modify it accordingly customize it i would help you to customize it so that you can use all the oral hygiene products and oral hygiene routine so that these things become adaptable for you and you can acclimatize to them very very comfortably at ease so the most common thing i would like to talk about is arthritis so with arthritis what happens is it becomes very difficult for you to hold the brush tightly to brush to change the side to move and all those things so for arthritis that's what i'm telling you you can modify to electric brushes where your manual pressure is not much needed the brush itself does it so we have got powered brushes we have got various companies which are giving it in the market so don't go and purchase over the counter what is available what is ideal for you there are variety available there is a lot of confusion a lot of dilemma when you go and purchase it so anyone needs an advice for it you can count on me i can help you out with that this is something this is not to intimidate any one of you present out here oral cancer is something which happens because during the age people who have got habit of smoking bitter nut chewing paan chewing or what we say in india supadi also those people and it is not only habits mind you oral cancer also happens sometimes when you have a sharp tooth you will be surprised or you may be bewildered knowing that even a sharp tooth of which you may be uh, lethargic to go to a dentist that it's okay it's physiological again same thing but that causes irritation to your tongue and that can lead to tongue cancer the first picture which i'm showing you on a screen you can see a ulcer on the tongue which happens because of a sharp tooth or a wrong bridge or a denture which is poking chronic poking so please make sure that any ulcer or any lesion in your mouth more than 3 weeks non healing you have to go for an advice of a dentist or a physician or, or you need to go for a intervention because we need to rule out what exactly it is so i am showing you on the lip because a lot of uv radiation exposure thin skin uh, your uh, fair skin people can got exposure of the uv lip tongue jaw cheek it is not only for the people who have habits but also for the people who have got improper dentures improper crowns sharp tooth poking tooth please make sure that you get an advice and you get them corrected because on chronic irritation chronic lesions long time bearing it it may turn into pre cancer or maybe a cancer also because as age increases you have less immunity you have a lot of other things which happens in your mouth which are changing and you need to make sure that this evaluation has to be 
done by the dentist and and we need to give you a preventive options if something like this is there so that we can correct it at a very initial stage or maybe at a maybe at a risk factor stage itself that you have something like this and we can help you out with that so please this is nothing to uh, intimidate any one of you this purely for education purpose my perspective of showing these pictures and to make you all to understand what is the significance of even having a sharp tooth in your mouth or a poking denture or a poking bridge or a or an irritating filling which is hanging around and you are not getting it treated so please make sure and definitely ponder about these points which i have mentioned just now to you we have an oral cancer awareness month the next month april where uh, we'll be conducting uh, some oral health uh, or oral cancer screening so we i would be there to help so you can definitely visit and i could screen if anything is there so that we can prevent not only oral cancer but if there is something which is having a risk to turn into that we could help you to at least eliminate that so that you can have a healthy and a happier life so this is the second session of the presentation where we move on to the oral changes in diabetes because that is most common today highly prevalent disease and you all know that diabetes and oral health is very 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 important because diabetes and oral health goes side by side when there is diabetes you have a bad health oral health when there is a bad oral health it leads to diabetes you will you will you will have to understand that the world health organization who and american diabetic association has accepted gum disease as the sixth complication of diabetes so as important is your eye your kidney your nerves as important the same important is your gums also and diabetes individuals should go for preventive gum therapies and they have to evaluate their gums and go for gum therapies diabetes individuals have three times more risk of getting gum disease and gum disease can lead to high sugar it is not only because you have high sugar you have gum disease because you have gum disease you may have higher sugar levels or vice versa this is something which i want you to understand it is a two way street it is a double and sword both of them are equally important both of them will lead to important effects on each other and this is a cycle of a gum disease and diabetes which all of you should take care of and mind you it is always important to get a screening of gum disease done get a preventive gum therapy done and understand then nowadays we have got a lot of laser assisted uh, therapies which are preventive aspects which are done in western countries and we could also do it and have start those therapies and they are therapies which are done and we could help you to prevent the gum disease because what happens with gum disease and diabetes same thing happens a lot of tartar you get root caries that means the decay happens in the root now as you can see in the picture that the gums are receding and there are cavities or see on the root so you get absolute sensitivity you see black discoloration of the tooth you get sensitivity and there is no management for root caries whenever there is a decay in the root we only advise you for extraction because we don't treat root caries so don't go don't wait for the stage for the decay to go to the root level where we cannot help you out with you can see a picture here you can see multiple decays you can see white white lesions you can see lesions in your mouth multiple fillings this is what is the common patient's mouth and this is what happens and you have to get these things done treated at a very early stage diabetes individuals will have a lot of gum enlargement you can see a lot of gum enlargement poor hygiene you can see the picture you can see so much of tartar these enlargements are sometimes because of some drugs because of poor oral hygiene not getting the cleaning done not feeling to go to a dentist for getting a check up done because you feel again that it is not necessary or because you have already so many medical problems that if i get this done i may have land up into some other problem no we are there to take care of it there are protocols i would consider these medical conditions and do a management that is where comes the role of lasers in dentistry where we avoid giving you a lot of uh, what, what do i say uh, problems like pain or bleeding and we do less or minimally invasive managements with laser so that we can help your gums to get corrected so that you can save your teeth for a more longer period of time and i would advise to save your teeth than going for replacement because what you have and natural is always best because natural teeth has proprioception you feel the pressure of what you are biting you enjoy the taste so it's always better to save your natural teeth that you have all the senses of your teeth all the tastes proprioception pain feeling everything is active and you can relish what you are actually eating burning mouth syndrome as i said you get lesions on your tongue because of your dry mouth you get burning mouth you get uh, uh, burning mouth sometimes with uh, spicy food or sometimes with normal food itself you can't even have water and 
don't wait for this to come out because then we have to start up with some steroid therapies and to avoid all those things there are other management aspects which are there for burning more syndrome also as i said dry mouth and fissured tongue which happens with aging similarly happens with diabetes candidiasis happens with diabetes it's a fungal infection you see white uh, it is like cottage cheese something like cottage cheese or curdled you want to see in your mouth you can scrape the white lesion on your mouth dentures this is what i mentioned you when i was speaking to you regarding dentures if you don't remove your denture don't clean your dentures what happens inside you see fungal infection in your mouth so we need to correct those dentures also we need to make sure that dentures are clean your mouth you have to evaluate the caregivers the role of caregivers from here maybe you yourself can see in the mirror open your mouth white and see wide and see whether you have any white lesions any red lesions anything which is uh, which is which, which you can scrape out then this is something a source of fungal infection we need to manage this also so please look into these findings also in your mouth and diabetes individuals yes because immunity is compromised healing is delayed opportunistic bacteria and fungus will attack frequently so you all have to be very careful with these things multiple ulcers and most important thing one of the most important thing where we as a periodontist as a gum specialist screen diabetes like you have got multiple abscess you know what abscess is abscess means accumulation of pus you can see in the picture you can see four or five places the patient has so much of pus inside so when there is a multiple pus patient comes to us and says i am fine but i have no problem when we send for sugar evaluation patient turns out to be diabetic positive so this is the first sign what you see in the gums when a patient is non diabetic and we screen the patient and then we come to know that patient is diabetic so there are lot of changes in the mouth which will give us an idea that the patient is diabetic which could be a multiple abscess multiple pus in your gums bleeding gums spontaneously without touching the gums only next day morning you get up and you see bleeding in your gums those things so please notice these things and please make sure that these are the uh, these are what the body is giving us see please understand that the oral cavity or your mouth is a mirror of your body whatever has happening in your body if the body reflects through your mouth and we as a dentist as a periodontist look into that and can give you an idea that these are the risk factors which are involved into you and you have to consider them so the reflection of your body is in your mouth and oral health is equal to your overall health so whatever it is elderly individuals diabetic individuals medically compromised individuals or even youngsters nowadays all of them have to make sure that these things are very very important to be considered so this is what i would like to conclude by saying that all of you please take care of your health consider oral health as one of the important aspect of your overall health go for regular checkups to a dentist the dentist will decide what type of compliance you belong to what type of supportive category you belong to whether you must come every 3 months whether you must come every 6 months one year we will categorize you we will help you and what i will do individually is as a gum specialist we have a preventive aspects of this we 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 call you make you compliant that we to come to us we come, we correct your gums properly we correct your teeth we'll tell you the regimens to be followed oral health regimens what flaws what mouthwash how to use maybe you can help your guide your caregivers to do it and this is how i could help you and contribute to all the members of the vara and all the members who are attending the presentation today and my setup is at dental dentics which is at himayat nagar hyderabad these are my social handles you can follow you can get a lot of awareness and uh, i would be always there to guide you to help everyone so that all of them can maintain a good oral hygiene a good oral health and all of you keep smiling Thank you so much. I'm there for the discussion, open discussion now. I hope it was clear, and I I made it uh, crisp and clear because of the two sessions previously. If people have missed out, they could look into that, and it could be some repetition. So I just uh, concise it to few of the important aspects and highlights for that. So let me know if anything is there. I'm I'm open. Whatever questions are parked for me, I'm there. there's there in the chat there is brilliant presentation you were amazingly clear thank you very much thank you thank you um does anybody who's here with us on zoom would you like to ask questions any oh yeah sorry yeah go ahead ma'am dr ashank yeah ma'am my question to you is uh, if your gums are receding yes uh, and especially the front two three teeth 
the lower jaw line. Is there some technique where you can pull the gum up or you learn to live with it? A very good question. I really appreciate that is something very common which you will uh, find. But yes, there is no, we can't pull the gum up because gum disease is irreversible. Once it is, gum disease is something which is irreversible. Hmm. You lose the gum, you lose the bone, you lost it forever. But when you come to an early stage, when it happened, just minute, we would have prevented it. But when the recession has happened long and your tooth start appearing long, we can prevent it to become more worse. We can't pull them up, but we can make them in such a way that they don't go further down and you lose your teeth. So there is a separate brushing technique for those type of teeth itself. What you do overall brushing technique is different. What you do for those four teeth which are having receding gums is entirely different. Which is called as, there's a different technique for that, which we advise for those teeth whose gums are receding and you want to prevent them to further recede. Because what is the, what is the consequence or a sequel of receding gum? Sensitivity. Sensitivity, getting decay in those areas. Appearance definitely, but then because it is lower, appearance doesn't matter much. But it happens unfortunately on the upper teeth. The moment you smile, you see that the gums are your, your teeth start appearing longer enough. So in those cases, we can also do some fillings sometimes if you want. Fillings can be done, but we cannot pull back your gums. I hope I'm clear. Fillings of gum. The gum fillings on the fillings on the roots on the roots oh. on those roots. Where gums have receded, fillings, because you have sensitivity. If you have sensitivity, we do the filling so that we cover the enamel so that you will not have an extreme sensitivity. Okay. So fillings are done to avoid sensitivity. And uh, brushing technique is, is advised to you so that you avoid the receding of the gums of the adjacent teeth. Because eventually what happens, all the gums start receding, then it becomes uncontrollable. So that is why every three months to six months, you have to go for dental cleaning evaluation so that this should not happen because the remaining set of 28 teeth or whatever teeth remaining in the mouth have to be prevented. And then you also mentioned uh, in one of your lectures, Dr. Ashan, that overbrushing is not good, etc. But how, how important or like we go out for dinners, we go out for parties and nobody's taking notice of really gargling your mouth thoroughly after... Maybe you might go home and do it or forget it. So immediately after food, what would you advise? Not able to understand. Uh, not able to. One second, man. I yeah. can ask. Um, the immediately after eating, what do you advise to keep the mouth clean? Whether it's yes, a gargle. Yes, 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 yes. That is good. Yeah. So immediately after eating, definitely when you're outside, I can't. We can't expect you to brush. Brushing is advised only two times. That's all. Wherever you are, you eat 10 times in a day also, no problem. Brushing is only twice and only two minutes. Brushing, not more than two minutes. This is ideal. Whenever you are eating outside, whatever it is, snacking or you are having a dinner outside or a dessert especially, at least rinse with the normal water. At least rinse. Because it will grossly flush off whatever is stuck between your teeth. After going home, you can brush. You are going to brush after going home in the last but if you're eating something, make sure that you at least gargle. No need for adding any warm water, no need for any salt. Just a normal rinse for 30 seconds in your mouth will flush off. Plus, it will also lubricate your mouth. As I said, dryness will be there. It lubricates your mouth. So when it lubricates your mouth, it, it, also, it also in fact promotes your saliva to be there so that the flushing automatically happens. There should be moisture in the mouth. It will not attack because the bacteria are waiting to do party in your mouth. Bacteria are there in your mouth. They are just waiting. You eat something, you don't rinse, they come out and they will start doing party because they want herbs, they want starch, they want to utilize it, convert into acid, you start getting decay. So bacteria is waiting inside. Everyone has a bacteria inside. Only thing is the moment you don't rinse or you don't brush, even not only for uh, elderly individuals, but for children also the same thing because they eat a lot of, lot of confectionery goods, a lot of, lot of chocolates. You need to rinse at least so that these sticky substances are not the food for the bacteria. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ashank. We have no uh, Chidambara with the question, uh, Dr. Ashank. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not one. I have got three questions, sir. Dr. Ashank, yeah. where is your uh, 
clinic in Hyderabad, first thing. Second thing, and uh, uh, do you have any um, facility for holding a uh, OP camp for, uh, uh, I'm a president of a senior citizens association. Have you got any facility to hold a uh, OP, uh, what you call a, a section for uh, for examining the yes uh, world at our office uh, for some time. My voice is audible, sir. Yeah, your voice is quite audible. I am audible. Okay. First of all, uh, welcome to my third session. I am very glad and honored that you are present today with us. Thank you very much. And uh, secondly, your uh, question, what you asked me. Uh, yes, my clinic is at Hyderabad, the Himayat Nagar area. And uh, third thing is, I would be glad to have an OP checkup for the individuals or for uh, you are you are a senior citizen organization. So for all the senior citizens, if you have, if you want them to come to my setup, we can plan schedule wise and we can do it. Or if you have all the people gathered at one place, I would personally come with my team and evaluate all the patients. I have no problem with that. This is what I am asking for because uh, unless uh, the people come to know that they have got a problem first, they yes, will not yes. be able to yes. go to and meet. Definitely, you. definitely, definitely, definitely. I would share my contact details with you. I will talk to you after this. And then we can have a collaboration where I myself can come to you or you can send all of them here and we can have a whole checkup screening and I will write down all the problems individual to the patient or individual. Then you can decide or take a call about the treatment. I'll be most honored to do that. No problem. Yeah. I will share uh, the information with you. Uh, so my last question is, I have a... thank you very much. My last no question problem. is, no, yes. I have got a multiple look at uh, RTCs, okay. RCTs, uh, yeah. multiple yes, yes. RCTs. And some, some of the teeth where there is a RCT capping, they are uh, uh, decaying uh, in the middle of the, below the RC cap, uh, and they are uh, crumbling. Uh, yes. Already one thing, one tooth I have lost. And okay, okay. Are on the way. So, uh, I would like to know whether something can be done about it. To yes, it. yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Something can be done. Something should be done, actually. You have undergone root canal treatment. You have undergone capping. Still, you are facing that means. I would uh, advise you that we will have a thorough checkup and then whatever teeth we can try. Because after doing root canal and capping, we have to save your teeth because you have undergone so much of treatment on that tooth. Eventually, you wanted to save that tooth. So we will try to clean that area and try to see if we can do some cementing in that and we save the tooth. And second, most important thing, I would help you to clean that area by yourself so that this should not happen in the other teeth. Yeah. How to clean interdentally? I would, I, I would advise you a customized brushes so that you can maintain them well. So no issue on that. I am always there to guide you. Uh, if you don't mind one more this thing. Yes, you yes, yes. Most much. Uh, you said... Uh, the bacteria inside the mouth uh, will cause other diseases. Uh, I'm mean, having serious, uh, uh, rather uh, chronic uh, throat uh, infection and uh, expectoration from the laryngeal uh, okay. area. Okay, okay. okay. you are COPD. Four, five years, yeah. four, five okay. years, uh, and sneezing and a uh, lot of uh, nasal running. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Anything with this could be? Yes, yes, yes. If you really, if, if I, 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 once I check, I can let you know, because if you have a lot of gum infection, and as you are saying, there's a lot of decay, that means there's a lot of gum infection. These bacteria contribute to your upper respiratory infection diseases. The bacteria contributes to it. So definitely from the mouth, the bacteria can go there. And if you have a upper respiratory infections also, bacteria because suppuration, as you are saying, a lot of sneezing, a lot of expectoration, these things definitely have to be considered. So uh, I think once uh, I will definitely uh, meet you, look into it and then advise you what best I can do for you, sir. No problem. No worries about it. So phone number is here. I will note it down and then I will see. Sure, sure. Definitely. Definitely. Sir. Definitely. Okay. Definitely.
I'll be in contact. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure, sir. Okay, thank you. Most welcome, sir. Good evening. Thank you so much, Dr. Ashank. As and when, if anyone else is, uh, comes up with questions, we will send them to your way and um, we'll be doing our camp with Dobara and with, uh, with Mr. Chidambara Mock, which means you're going to be helping a lot of people. That's going to be amazing. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Most welcome, most welcome. I hope things make it. Post his phone number, Andre. On the I, mail. I, I'll email everything to you, Uncle Chidambara. Don't okay, worry. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Shank. What we're going to do is we're going to put all this information. We're going to share the three videos along with your um, practice and how to contact you on our website so that sure. everyone has that information as well and can always look back at the videos if they Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. They can look back at the video. Uh, maybe we, uh, we, we again take up some other topic after a couple of months and then maybe we revise few things. Maybe people can, after the videos, maybe people may gather a little more doubts. And once again, the doubts are more accumulated, we can have one more session answering Q&A for everything. That also would be helpful. So it's awesome. always there. I think I'm awesome. part of Dubara. So I mean, I'm, I am. I mean, uh, yes. Mr. Zambara. Samin Karne, my greetings to Mother Amina. I will, I will. She's right here. She's next to you on the screen, Uncle Thank Zambara. You. I will. Thank you so much. No, no, I, see, I could not see. I didn't see. I didn't see. I'm going to sign out. Thank you, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Bye. Take care. Keep smiling, all of you.